All right, so today we're going to be looking at lesson 20-1. We're going to be looking at the Pythagorean theorem. So they start off by telling us about Sarah. She owns an online company that manufactures custom kites. Her customers go to her website and design their own kites, and then Sarah's company builds them. Many of her customers don't know the correct names for the parts of a kite. Sarah is creating a web page to educate them so that they can communicate better with Sarah and her staff. Since many of the kites are going to include right triangles, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to analyze the dimensions of the kite. So, the Pythagorean theorem, they tell us over here, in any right triangle, the square of the hypotenuse, so the hypotenuse is the longest side. It is opposite the right angle. It is going to be equal to the sum of the squares of the two legs. And so they say if A and B are your legs and C is the hypotenuse, then we can say C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Some of you may be more familiar with A squared plus B squared equals C squared, and that's an acceptable way as well. That's actually what I will typically use, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So let's look at one. The simplest kite is the diamond kite as shown. When the sides of this type of kite meet at a right angle, you can use Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the spine. So which side of our triangle is the hypotenuse? So if you look at triangle X, Y, Z, the right angle is at Z. So the side that is opposite it is the spine, which is side X, Y. So the hypotenuse is X, Y. Which sides are the legs? The legs are adjacent to the right angle. So our legs are X, Z, and Z, Y. And so now we want to use Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the spine. So I'm going to use A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So obviously my hypotenuse is my C squared. So we are looking for the C squared because we don't know what it is. The A and the B are the 12 and the 35. And it doesn't matter which one you put as A and which one you put as B. They're your legs and so they can be interchanged. And so then if you square, you get 144 plus 1225. And if you add those together, you get 1369. So then we need to take the square root. And so that gives me 37. So the length of the spine is 37 inches. That's my hypotenuse that I just found. So let's look now. We have one way to prove the Pythagorean theorem by using similar triangles. And so we're actually going to be using what we looked at in the previous two lessons, dealing with the right triangle altitude theorem and our three similar triangles. So in our right triangle ABC, as shown, we have an altitude drawn to the hypotenuse AB, forming two right triangles that are similar to triangle ABC. And so they want us to go back and think about writing that similarity statement for the three similar triangles. So we've done this over the last couple of lessons. So I'm going to start with triangle ABC. It is going to be similar to triangle CBD and triangle ACD. And so there are two different ways you can do that. Remember, you can match up the sides or you can match up the angles. You should want to make sure that your corresponding parts are in the same spot. So if you look on the next page up here at the top, they give us two ratios. And we're actually going to need the picture that we were just looking at. So we're going to be filling in those two ratios, and I'm going to go back so that we can look at our figure. So it says that the corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional. So we can write proportions involving the sides of the triangles, uh, the sides of these triangles here. And so the first proportion they give us is B over X equals blank over B. So what you should be noticing is that B is duplicated. It happens twice here and here in our proportion. So that means that B is a geometric mean. Locate B on your triangle over here 
It is a leg of the larger triangle. So we are going to use our geometric mean. And since the leg is the geometric mean, it is the geometric mean of the whole hypotenuse and the part of the hypotenuse that is adjacent to it. So the whole hypotenuse is C. The part that is adjacent to it is X. So they already put X, so we need to put C. Then it says to find the cross product. So if you cross multiply, you get that CX equals B squared. So now let's look at the second proportion. They tell us A over something equals C over A. So again, we have a duplicated value, A. So A is our geometric mean. So if you locate A right here, it is also a longer leg. And so it's the geometric mean of the two of the whole hypotenuse and then the part of the hypotenuse that is closer to that A. So the two parts are C, because that's the whole hypotenuse, and then the part that's closest to the A is C minus X. So if you cross multiply on this one, you end up with C squared, and you have to make sure to multiply the C to the X, because you're doing C times C minus X. So C squared, and then distribute to the X, you get minus CX equals A squared. So that's part three. Going to part four, it says using those equations, what can we do? Notice C squared equals B squared, I mean CX equals B squared. So instead of CX, I can write B squared. So I can say C squared minus B squared equals A squared. And so what do you notice? If you look, add the B squared, to both sides and you have a squared plus b squared equals c squared and so that's how they were wanting you to show how to um, that using your similar triangles produces the pythagorean theorem so looking now at the check your understanding it talks about a pythagorean triple so this is new pythagorean triple it's a set of three non-zero whole numbers that satisfy the pythagorean theorem so it's a set of three positive integers. No decimals, no radicals, no fractions. A set of three positive integers, A, B, and C, that work in the Pythagorean theorem. That are A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So, why do the numbers 3, 4, and 6 not make a Pythagorean triple? They are whole numbers. They are non-zero whole numbers. They are positive integers. So, let's look. 3 squared plus 4 squared, does that equal 6 squared? If it does, then it would be a Pythagorean triple. So, 9 plus 16, does that equal 36? 9 plus 16 is 25, and clearly 25 is not equal to 36. So that's why it's not a Pythagorean triple. One example of a Pythagorean triple it doesn't ask you for one, but I'm going to give you one. 3, 4, and 5. And if you look, 3 squared plus 4 squared, does that equal 5 squared? 3 and 4, when you square them and add them together, we just said was 25. And that does equal 5 squared, which is 25. So that's how you can verify if you have a Pythagorean triple or not. So now, looking at 6, why in your Pythagorean theorem... Is it only going to be true if C is greater than both A and B? So, the length of a side of a triangle has to be greater than zero. You can't have negative side length. So, we obviously, if we could use negative numbers, then, you know, it might not would work exactly. But since we have to have positive numbers for our side lengths, using our Pythagorean theorem, the two legs are going to have to be shorter than the hypotenuse. If you start plugging in numbers, that's not going to work unless the C is the largest. And that's why the hypotenuse has to be the longest side in your triangle. So C has to be greater because it's the hypotenuse. It has to be the longest side. So now let's look here. One of Sarah's customers designed the rhombus-shaped kite shown below. The length of the spine AC is 28 inches. And the length of the spar, DB, is 24 inches. 
And we want to explain how to find the perimeter of a kite if the lengths of the spine and the spar are known. So let's look here. We know AC is 28, and we know that DB is 24 here. So what they want you to figure out is talking about something with the rhombus. What do you remember about a rhombus? So some things to think about. The diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other and they're perpendicular. So what that means, DE and EB are half of DB. Each of these are congruent. Likewise, AE and CE are half of AC. They are congruent. So we're going to start with that. They told us the lengths of our diagonal. So we know if AC is 28, half of that is 14. And we know DB is 24, so half of that is 12. Then we can use Pythagorean theorem to find the length of AD. So if we find the length of AD, then we know it's a rhombus, so all of the four sides are congruent. And so once we have one side, multiply it by four, or add it four times, and that would give you your perimeter. So that's what they actually want you to do in part B. So I'm going to say 12 squared plus 14 squared equals C squared, or you could say AD squared. So 144 plus 196 equals C squared. 340 equals C squared. So take the square root, and I get C is... 18.4. So that means that AD has a length of 18.4 inches. And then if I'm looking for the perimeter, I'm just going to say 4 times 18.4, which gives me 73.6 inches for my perimeter. So you got to carry forward that concept that we talked about with the rhombus. So look at on the next page. Use the Pythagorean theorem to show that the diagonals of a square with side lengths f are congruent. So I'm going to draw a square. And I'm going to draw a diagonal. And we know if it's a square, it has four right angles and four congruent sides. And it says the side lengths are f. So there's my square. Let's look at the diagonal. Using Pythagorean theorem, you would have s squared plus s squared equals c squared. So s squared plus s squared is 2s squared. And so take the square root. The square root of 2 is the square root of 2. It's a decimal, so we'll leave it like that. Over here, the square root of c squared is c. Likewise, the square root of s squared is f. So I have that one diagonal is the square root of 2f. If you look, which triangle was I talking about? Because they're identical. So by the same logic, the other diagonal is going to have the same length. Even if I drew it this way, I'm still going to be having the exact same side lengths. So your diagonals of a square are always going to be the same, and they're going to be the square root of 2 times s. Now let's look at number 9. How high up a vertical wall will a 24-foot ladder reach if the foot of the ladder is placed 10 feet from a wall? So we have our wall here. We have a ladder. Here's our ladder. It is 24 feet long and it says that the base of the ladder is 10 feet away from the wall and we are assuming that we have a right triangle because typically walls are built at 90 degree angles with the ground and we are looking for the height here so we can use Pythagorean theorem x squared plus 10 squared equals 24 squared so x squared plus 100 equals 576. If you subtract 100, you have x squared equals 476. And then take the square root. Gives you that x would be 
21.8. So the height would be 21.8 feet. That's how far up the wall it would reach. Now let's look at number 10. Find the unknown side length. So we're going to use Pythagorean theorem. Our A and our B are 27 MB. And our C is our hypotenuse. So if you square 27, you get 729. Plus B squared equals 1,444. If you subtract, you get 715. And then take the square root, and you have that B is the square root of 715. So it says leave it in simplified radical form. So square root of 715, which as a decimal is 26.7. Looking at part B, we're again going to use Pythagorean theorem. So my A and my B are 14 and 35. So if I square those, I get 196 and 1,225. Add those together and I have 14, 21. And so take the square root. So I have the square root of 14, 21. That factors as 7 and 203, 7 and 29, and 29 is prime. But I have a pair of 7s, so I can make this 7 squared to 29 if I'm making it simplified radical form, which is, as a decimal, 37.7. Whoops. So that's how you can find the length there. Those are pretty basic. Those are just using Pythagorean theorem. Plug it in, solve for your answer. Now let's look at number 11, a little bit more involved. Find the area of a rectangular rug if the width of the rug is 13 and the diagonal is 20. So we have a rug here. We have a width of 13 and the diagonal is 20. We know it's a rectangle, so we've got right angles. So we can use Pythagorean theorem to find our length. So we have 13 squared plus L squared equals 20 squared. So 13 squared would be 169 plus L squared equals 400. Subtract to get L squared is 231 and then take the square root. And so I have the L is the square root of 231 feet. And then that's not what it asked for. It said find the area. So area is length times width. So our length we just found, 231, the square root of 231, and the width they gave us was 13. So if you multiply, you have 13 times the square root of 231, or if you want to make that a decimal, you have 197.6 feet squared, because it's feet times feet, so feet squared for your units. Okay, so that's how you would work through one like that. Find what they're missing, and then you can find the area. For number 12, which of the following is a Pythagorean triple? So let's look. Is 3 squared plus 4 squared equal to 6 squared? 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. 6 squared is 36. So I have 25, which is not equal to 36. So no, A does not work. Looking at B. We have 7 squared plus 25 squared. Does that equal 26 squared? So 7 squared plus 25 squared ends up being 674. Is that equal to 676? No. So this is not um, a Pythagorean triple either. Looking at C, if you look, you would have 15 squared plus 21 squared. Is that equal to 25 squared? So 15 squared and 21 squared, when you add those together, is 666. And that is not equal to 625, which is 25 squared. So no on that one. Looking at D, hopefully it's right, because that's the last one that we have. 9 squared plus 40 squared, does that equal 41 squared? So 9 squared plus 41, 40 squared is 1,681. And 41 squared is also 1,681. So, yes, D would be our answer there. It is a Pythagorean triple. Now, looking at number 13. 
I'm going to erase some of this work. We have a rectangle that has a width of 15. No, the diagonal is 15. The width is 6. So, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find my length. 6 squared plus length squared is going to equal my hypotenuse squared. So, 36 plus L squared equals 225. So, L squared equals 189. Then take the square root, and I get that L is 13.7 centimeters. And then I'm looking for the perimeter. I know it's a rectangle. So, if this left side is 6, the right side is 6. If the bottom side is 13.7, the top side is 13.7. So you can either do 2 times your width plus 2 times your length, or you can just add those four numbers together. But you should get that your perimeter is 39.4 centimeters. Looking at number 14, we have a rhombus. So I'm going to draw a rhombus best I can. We know that all four sides are congruent. The longer diagonal is 16. So I'm going to say that's my longer diagonal. If it's 16, each of these are 8. And we know they're perpendicular. And it says that the perimeter of the rhombus is 40. So all four sides are the same. So 40 divided by 4 gives 10 for each of these four sides. So we're going to look more specifically at one of our triangles. So I'm going to draw it bigger. We know the hypotenuse is 10. We know that this side here is 8. And so we're looking for the base. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we can find it. x squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. So x squared plus 64 equals 100. x squared would be 36. Take the square root, and x is 6. So this length is 6 right here. But it asks for the length of the shorter diagonal. So we know this side is 6. This side is also 6. So the shorter diagonal is going to be 12 centimeters. So that's for number 14. Now looking at 15. We are storing art supplies in a cube-shaped box with 8-inch sides. So this one is a little bit more difficult to visualize we've got a three-dimensional object. So, here's our box. We have a paintbrush that is 13.5 inches long, and it wants to determine or explain how Kyle determined that his paintbrush would fit in the box. So, what you're going to need to do is first we have a right triangle here, and we know it's a cube, so these side lengths are 8. And we need to find this diagonal here. So if we use Pythagorean theorem, we will get 8 squared plus 8 squared equals c squared. So 64 plus 64 equals c squared, which is 128, and take the square root. So we know our diagonal is the square root of 128, which does simplify. You could write it as a decimal or um, a simplified radical. We're going to leave it there because we're about to use it in just a minute. So what we need to look at is the length of the longest part that would possibly fit in this box. And that is going from one corner to the opposite diagonal corner. So if you need to get out a box, to look to see that the diagonal is the longest there, that is what's going to happen. And so that diagonal that is formed uses the diagonal we just found on the bottom as part of its right angle, right triangle. So this blue is a new right triangle. And I know that this bottom part is the square root of 128. I know this top or this right side is 8 because that's one of the sides of the cube. And so I can again use Pythagorean Theorem to find my actual long diagonal here. So I can say 8 squared plus the square root of 128 squared equals, I'll say, D squared, just to say 
a different variable. So 8 squared is 64. 128 squared, the square root of 128 squared is 128. And so 64 plus 128 is 192. Take the square root. And so you get, if you write it as a simplified radical, 8 squared to 3 or 13.87 inches. So the diagonal length is 13.87, which is a little bit bigger than 13.5. So that's how the, paint, the paintbrush will fit in that box. So hopefully that helps you a little bit with understanding how you can use Pythagorean theorem on some different problems.